Hi everyone! Today we're going to take a closer look at this new release liquid cooler coming from Arctic known as the Liquid Freezer 3. I will be showing you with the accessories and how to mount on the two platforms which is AMD and Intel and inclusive of the thermal results. I believe there are lots of contents regarding about this Liquid Freezer 3 and most of the reviewers are coming from a cooler country. So for those of you who are actually in Asia and throughout the whole year if you are having a hot and humid weather just like where I am as you can see here right as some of you know that during all my contents when I do the benchmark right my room temperature is always at 30 to 31 degrees celsius and it's never never changed unless it's rainy season whereby the coolest temperature will be 28 degrees celsius and 29 degrees celsius around there so this might strike the interest on how this unit perform in a hot and humid country now before I talk about the in-depth details of this cooler, something which I like to talk about, whereby at the start you have watched that there is this desk fan, which I'm going to show you right now. This is coming from Arctic, known as the Sum Air Foldable USB Table Fan. Now, why do I bring this out? Reason being right, in the office, I normally make use of this fan. And this, in time, the blade will be very dirty. I will need to clean out the dust. And in order for me to remove this right, I have to pry open the clip in order for me to clean the uh, blades. In fact, some of the clips is already really damaged. So having to say so, right? Oh, furthermore, this fan is not, re not really that strong. Now, Arctic have done this wonderful desk fan. Why do I say so? Because this is foldable, as you can see. I can position the angle. And this is the uh, fan adjustment for the RPM where the air will blow towards you and this come in two variant what i'm having is the usb variant which is wired and the other variant is wireless whereby there is a portable uh, battery inbuilt you can just charge it unplug the cable and you can place the fan anywhere you want and to blow it and for that wireless right it comes with a 14 hours operation at full load now, besides this, right, as mentioned to you, my original desk fan, right, this is very hard for me to clean the blades. Else, Arctic have done a wonderful job. Take a look at this. Now, if you want to clean the blades, right, and the frame itself, right, all is needed is just to twist this towards the right. And you can remove this whole frame off and to wash this. And some of you might be familiar that this five blade, in fact, yes, it is. It's a P12 um, fan where they have placed in this foldable fan. So to clean it, right, it's pretty simple. There are only five blades. And at the back, right, these are all true. You can just clean it. Once you're done cleaning, right, you can just place this frame back. Oh, by the way, this, you can wash it. Once it's dry, right, you can just place it back. And to clip it in place. So it's pretty... This is a very nice desk fan that I find is very practical in usage. Now, if you guys are interested to find out how, what's the uh, price for this foldable desk fan, right? Do take note, there are two variants. One is actually wired, the other one is wireless. So you can check it out at Arctic Web Shop. I will leave the uh, URL in my description, or you can just take a look at my right-hand corner whereby I place the QR code. You can scan and check out the price which is in Euro. And if you guys are in here, I mean, if you guys are here in Singapore, you can purchase this locally. We have a local shop that sells this that's actually coming from Tech Dynamic. You can scan the QR code on my top right-hand corner and it will take you to the uh, Shopee platform. Without further ado, I'll be talking about the Liquid Freezer 3, but before anything else, I'd like to thank Arctic to have provided the uh, desk fan, the Liquid Freezer 3, and also this mouse mat. And I'll be talking about this mouse mat later. Let's begin. This time around, Afik have listened to all the viewers whereby they have produced two different colors for this liquid freezer tree. What you see here is in black. If you purchase a white color liquid freezer tree, the fans will be in white. The sleeve hose on the radiator is in white. The pump is in white. 
inclusive of the radiator. And what you see over here right, are all in white. And on top of it, it comes with two modes. Starting off with the stealth mode whereby it doesn't have any ARGB. The stealth mode only comes in black. Or if you fancy ARGB like things right, you can purchase the ARGB variant where, where it comes with black or white too. All this that you see here right, is contained in this box. And the box is pretty straightforward. Showing you all the specification and such. Now, in this box, it doesn't come with an instruction manual. In order to mount this unit and to follow instructions, right, you will need to scan the QR code that is found in the box, whereby it says preparation, installation, and video guides. So make sure to follow this and to install your unit. Now, with all the accessories listed over here, I'll start off with the left. You have a package whereby these are all the radiator screws for you to mount your radiator to your case and inclusive of additional fan screws just in case if you need it two sets of cable which i will talk about it what's the difference of these two cable for and this section is mainly for your intel platform whereby it's catered for 12th gen all the way to 14th gen intel processor you'll be provided with a top screwdriver which has a star shape these are the contact frame mounting screws Again, I'm going to show you what this is for and the contact frame itself, a very unique touch which I think I've actually done, especially for this unit. And over at this section, right, this is for the AM4 and AM5, which is for your AMD processor. With this package, you have spacer and screws just to mount this offset bracket. And these are actually offset and it's nicely labeled as left and right. And you'll be provided with a 2 gram MS6 thermal paste. And this over here, right, this in fact is the cover of the pump, which I will show you later. And in this pump, right, there is a fan inside. Okay, whereby it will blow your VRM at the top and your VRM heatsink at the rear. Besides the color, which is black or white, or be it non-ARGB or ARGB, it comes with four sizes, which is 240, 280, 360, and 420. I will first start off with the measurements, starting off with the 280. I'm so sorry that I do not have a 240, so I can't tell you the measurements. But as for the 280, from here to here is at 315 millimeter. And from the side, which is the width from here to here is 138 millimeter and you might be saying that hey this 280 should be having a 140 millimeter width but if you see closely right see the fan is protruding out which is a 140 mm fan same goes to the other side it's protruding out now for the thickness of all the sizes be it a 240 280 360 or the 420 right the measurements of the radiator is at 38mm, followed by the fan which is 25mm, total will give you a 63mm. Now on the 360, which I'm going to move this one side, the length of the 360, this is a 360. Now from here to here is 395mm, and as for the width, from here to here is 120 millimeter. Coming to the 420, which is this. Now the length from here to here is at 455 millimeter. And as for the side, this is exactly with the 280, which is 138 millimeter. Next, I'll be talking about the main unit or the structure of the body itself starting off with the radiator now i like what Arctic have done with their new lf3 as you can see right compared to the lf2 this is the liquid freezer too if i were to press my fingers over here right you can see all the prints over here it's very ugly else for the new design this is not smooth it's rough not too sure if you can see so if you were to press right you see no fingerprints and best part it has a subtle logo over here as compared to the lf2 this is portraiting out 
pretty prominently. And again, see all the prints, it's very ugly. Next will be the fin stack. As you can see, right, for Liquid Freezer 3, you might feel that it's the same as the Liquid Freezer 2, which is correct, not wrong. But take a look at the gap on the Liquid Freezer 2. As you can see the gap. This tells me that the fin stack, right, is thinner, as in like it's not taller, it's thinner. Else for the re Liquid Freezer 3, right, take a look at the gap. It's narrower. So this tells me that the fin stack right is thicker, taller. And with taller fin stack right, there are more surface area to absorb heat and to dissipate heat, which is one good point. Next will be the connection point between the hose to the radiator, where you have this short part over here, which are in black, which is nice. And the flexibility is good as compared to the liquid freezer too. As you can see here, this is too tall and the cable, I mean the hose is very hard to bend and worst part is that this will in time tarnish as you can see. The silver shining part right is fading as compared to the new version which you can see, these are all in black. Nice touch and speak about the flexibility right, the whole hose which is nicely braided is easily bent see without any issues and best part is that the length of this right as usual just like the liquid freezer too be it whether you're purchasing a 240 280 360 or 420 liquid freezer 3 the length of the hose is 450 millimeter now coming to the pump area right i like it where they had the same bud which is black and this is sweepable so this make mounting easier and more flexible and on top of which right the mounting mechanism over at the pump here this is pre-installed as compared to the arctic liquid freezer 2 see you have to mount this in order to mount to your ihs which is kind of troublesome so they have thought of all this nice touch and for the pump cold plate this is full couple just like the arctic liquid freezer 2 and as for the size, right, I have a co plate of the Liquid Freezer 2. It's of the same. No change. The only thing that is changed in this co plate, right, is inside, which is showing the fin stack over here. Now, I'm not going to dismantle this just to explain to you as I have the blueprint. For the Liquid Freezer 2, right, the height of the fin stack is 2.5 millimeter. Else, for Liquid Freezer 3, this is at 3.5 millimeter tall. So, meaning to say, taller fin stack, more surface area to absorb heat and to dissipate heat through the cold plate, which is good. And another thing different is that the pump head here, right, the max speed RPM is at 2800. As compared to the liquid freezer 2, this is at 2000 RPM. So, a huge, significant improvement on it. Next, I'd like to talk about the fans itself. Now, for the fans, right, when you purchase a 240 or a 360, be it the Stealth or the ARGB version, it comes with a P12 fan. Whether is it a ARGB or non-ARGB, this depends on you what you have purchased. If you purchase a Stealth mode, this blade over here, right, will not be ARGB effects. Else, if you do purchase anything that's ARGB, right, these are all with ARGB effects. Now, this is on the 240 and 360 which is making use of the p12 fans now if you are using a 280 or 420 you will also come with a signature fan which is the p14 on the stealth will be non-argb on the argb will be argb hope that makes sense now besides this right another thing about the pump here whereby you know that the original version, right, it only comes with one cable. You just plug one cable and you operate all the uh, VRM fans and such. Now, Arctic have done something additional whereby it give you a choice of having it separate, like what you see over here. Okay, this is one end, right? This end here is to plug over here. 
So when you plug this right, you can split all the controls. See, it's listed over here nicely. Now it happened this is a stealth mode, so you only have this over here which says BRM, the fan and the pump. So you can separate this and to control them through your motherboard connection, which is good. Or if you choose to, you can just, you know, lazy to uh, plug so many stuff, right? And you want neat cables and such. It comes with this too, which is single. Which this, right? When you plug this to the uh, pump itself, right? This will control the pump, the CPU fan, and the VRM fans. Now, something which I like to talk about more regarding about these cables over here. When you are using the split cables, as I show you over here, right? It's good that most of the motherboard can, I mean, make use of as in like the fan haters. Let me just show you. Okay, all these fan haters. Majority of the motherboard will either come with one ampere or two ampere. So if you were to split them, right? Not an issue, but if you are to make use of this cable, please be more cautious because you are drawing all the amperage of the VRM fan, the pump, and the uh, CPU fans on only one cable. So assuming that your fans right, are drawing each drawing at 0.22 ampere, so total up, let's say you got three, will be 0.6 ampere. And inclusive of the pump, inclusive of the BRM fans, right? If it exceed more than one ampere, and it happened that if your motherboard header is, you know, only supplying one ampere, some motherboard does, then you're gonna have a problem. So I would advise that for safe, uh, safety precaution, right? If you want to connect only with one cable, right? Make sure that you check the header on your uh, motherboard itself. Make sure that the fan header can supply more than one ampere, which is two ampere or three ampere, which is fine. If not, on the safer bed, just make use of this speed cables. So that individually, right, we'll draw on the individual fan headers, be it the pump, the uh, chassis fan, or the uh, CPU fan. Next, I'd like to talk about the pump cover. Now, in the event, if you're mounting this cold plate on your processor, you don't have to place this cover at the top. You can just leave it off and then mount this in, screw the retention bracket to your processor and to connect this cable. And once you've done that, right, simply just apply this cover at the top and you will be nicely covered. And why am I showing you three different covers over here? Starting on my left, this is the Stealth, which is non-ARGB liquid freezer tree, whereby the blade over here, right? Now, this blade over here does not turn, all right? The only thing that turns is only the VRM fan, which is located inside. See, this is the VRM fan. So having to say this, right, this is non-ARGB. And as you can see, the connection point over here, right, the pins, which connect to the pump pin over here, there's only four, which controls the uh, BRM fan. Else, if you were to choose to purchase a ARGB version, this is how it's gonna look like, be it the black or the white, whereby the blade, is translucent white and the connection point right as you can see okay probably i'll just show you one it's total of seven this is whereby it controls the argb effect on the blade over here and the vrm fan now another thing i like to talk about is this are uh, very good implementation in the event let's say your argb is 40 and your vrm fan is 40 right you can just remove off this unit submit a RMA form through Arctic and they will just give you this whole unit and you can just replace it without removing the whole pump which is good so you can just you know remove this replace it with a I mean replace with a new uh, cover which is like this very handy now to illustrate to you how to mount the uh, cold plate which is here to the AMD platform. With me right now is the AM5 platform. First thing you need to remove the two original brackets, which is hold by four screws. Once you have done this right, make use of the spacer, place it at the four holes. 
Then next is to align the mounting bracket, which is this. As you can see here, right, this third left and right. So make sure that the labor, or should I say the alphabet, is at the correct direction. Then you place one at a time. And using the screws that is provided to mount this bracket onto the spacer. I'm done with the left and right. So what is needed, do not over tighten, just make sure that it's secured and we'll do hand tighten. Don't over screw it. Once this is done right, next thing you can use alcohol, clean the uh, IHS surface, apply thermal paste. Okay, place it where the angle that you're comfortable with. So I prepared it this way. Okay, let me just zoom out. I've deliberately placed the motherboard this way, whereby the M.2 is facing top and the VRM hissing at the top is facing at the bottom. So you can see a clear picture how I mount the uh, cold plate. First thing first, remove off your RAMs for easier access because this is in the case you have more headroom. Next is uh, clean this IHS with alcohol, apply thermal paste. I prefer the spread method rather than the cross. That is 100% contact when you do the spread. Then followed by, on the cold plate itself, right? make sure you mount the cables which I showed you earlier, which is controlling the pump, the VRM fan and your radiator fans. Plug this in first. Because if you mount this in and you want to plug it in, right, it's going to be very difficult. So make sure you plug this in first. And for those of you who have purchased the ARGB version of the liquid freezer tree, you will have this additional cable. This is for the ARGB effect, which is to be connected to your motherboard. So tuck this along with the rest of the cable. Now next is, you have applied the paste. Next is to prepare your cold plate. Make sure you remove off this plastic cover. And again, apply alcohol, clean it. Reason being right, this plastic might have some sticky residue on the cold plate. So just to be 100% sure that it's clean from all the uh, residue and such, just clean it. Once that's done, right? Now the following step, which I'm going to show you is pretty simple. I've seen a lot doing this and I wouldn't encourage that to do so. Reason being right, they have been holding this at the top over here, the whole section over here, and they mount it in. Now, at the back, you have good pressure because your fingers are supporting it or your hand is actually for supporting it. But what about the front? This will lift up. So having an even pressure. So I would to show you my style on how I'm going to cram this. First thing, since this is elevated up, you can just, you know, align to this two, two screw track first, starting with the right or left up to you. So I would have angle this to this hole here. Then next, I will angle to this hole. At this moment of time, right, you don't have to worry that the cold plate is touching your IHS. It's not, because you have not crammed it down yet. So once you've aligned that nicely, right, having a C shape with this four fingers right supporting the back and one finger supporting the front. So you just apply pressure over here, okay? Then hold on it. While you're holding on it, right, your palm is resting over here where your rams are not there, so it's quite easy. So once you hold on it, right, since it's firm, okay, you can actually even tuck this over here. So you have all covered with even pressure, the back, the front, and the center. Then track this down. Okay, you will feel it. See, it's pretty straightforward. So do it diagonally, as in like alternately. See, it's so simple. I have seen my friend fiddling with it. It's like, you know, cause they hold, the thing is that they hold at the back. So it's become very unbalanced. If you were to do it this way, right? Having a cross pin, right? You are in fact, intersection is like, you know, firm down to the cold plate and make screwing easier. So once you've done this right, next thing to do, tuck this cable away, place the cover. See, that's done. Simple and effective. 
for Intel platform on the 1700 bracket or socket, be it generation 12, 13, 14, or even the 1851 socket, which is meant for the generation 15. First thing, all is needed is this contact frame, the four contact screws that is provided by the uh, liquid freezer tree, and the uh, Allen top screwdriver. Now, before you execute anything, have your processor standby. Next is to check the back plate of your motherboard. If there's a back plate right, then you will need to find something to leave it up. Cause if you were to unscrew the uh, contact frame right, as in like this socket over here, this whole back plate will drop. So you need to support it with something, which I'm gonna use this, something soft. Okay, then I'm just going to flip over. Now I'm just going to zoom in, having the proper position. First thing, plug in your processor. Okay, do it carefully. Reason to place your processor right, because while you're unscrewing all this, I mean the uh, socket brackets, right? You won't accidentally hit the uh, pin. You, you hit the pin. If you hit the pin, you can't use the uh, motherboard. So make sure you place the processor in, sit in place. Once you've done right, make use of the top Allen screwdriver, unscrew all this. Now there is a disclaimer on this. If you were to do this right, you might void the warranty. So make sure you know about this. K1 is down, this is out. Do not use back the original screw, all right? Next, use the contact frame where you can see there's a triangle over here. Now it should be spacing this way cause the triangle is over here. So place this at the top. K1 is seated. Make use of the four contact frame screw, which is Philip. This is provided with the liquid freezer tree, place it in, okay, then you screw this down. And when you screw this right, make sure you give even pressure again, I would advise to press over here, then screw this in. Now do anti-clockwise till you hear a click, see, you hear a click, then you tighten, then followed by the next one. You don't have to tighten all the way just enough for the screw to hold on the bracket because you need to apply even pressure okay over here so basically i'm going through filling so once you've done this right still holding on to it do it diagonally tighten it Small steps. And at all times, your two fingers over here, right, make sure you press it down. Not too much force, but just to hold it so that you know that when you screw, right, it's even. So once it's done, right, okay, I'm almost finished. I can feel that it's gripping. Okay, that's done. Okay, once this is done, right, again, Anger in a position that you're comfortable with. I'm just going to show you again where the M.2 is facing upwards and my BRM is facing downwards. Okay, by the way, I've already mentioned that the holes make sure it's facing towards the M.2 and not placing at the top of your BRM. Because this, when having the holes facing downwards, right, you will have better thermal performance. So again, Okay, let me just zoom this out. Again, anchor this two point here, the two retention screw to the contact frame where you have th this two thread. And again, apply your thermal paste, I mean clean your IHS with your thermal paste, apply, sorry, clean your IHS with your alcohol, apply thermal paste, make sure you remove off this, I mean protective cover, 
clean it with alcohol just to make sure that there's no residue and of course plug in your cables as mentioned now earlier on I showed you that to target this way in fact you can tuck it at the bottom it's easier when you close the uh, AIO cover so once you've done this right again feather with the adjustment you will be able to feel the two holes as mentioned right when you're doing this right your contact on the cold plate to your IHS will not be pressured down so you don't have to worry that you will smudge so again once you've done this right apply pressure over here then again C method make sure your ramps are off from here right so you can have you can have the headroom and also to rest your palm over here to grip it to have a st sturdy uh, firm grip then again two fingers at the back one finger in the front and this at the top so once you have done this right you'll be then able to screw this in see it's pretty straightforward done then with this cable right tucking to the bottom then you can place this in see done so simple and also I forgot to mention on the AMD I uh, mean mounting right same as the Intel whereby you have to mount this all the uh, fan headers the uh, palm to the, of course the palm to the palm the VRM you can place it to chassis fan one or maybe system fan one and the most important which is under fan please plug this to the CPU fan then if you have purchased the ARB, ARGB version right you have this 3 pin PWM sorry 3 pin 5 volt ARGB connector connect to your motherboard and to control the ARGB effects right you will make use of the motherboard utility just an illustration on the ARGB of the AIO pump whereby I have set to my controller see I can change and in fact you can brighten up in fact it's very bright by default so I have to dim it down and the fusion is nicely done now this is the black cover and you have to swap to the white let me just turn this off now something to take note when you are placing the cover to the pump block right make sure that your cables over here are tucked nicely below in fact there is a catch over here so make sure you tuck them in so that you will not be in the way if not right if you leave this dangling right when you place the cover right you might just cut this cables over here and these are very thin so make sure that you tuck it nicely then once you're done right you can clip it back on see it's quite simple then I'll turn it on again see the colors are very bright so I'm gonna turn it down <laughs> so you can switch to different colors so this is how it looks like now to illustrate how the pump sounds like and with the VRM fans right now it's a quiet I'm not plugged in to the uh, connector yet which this will be running at full speed this is a quiet and now I'm gonna plug it in see this is with the VRM fan and the pump as you can hear there might be some gargling due to the fact that this is a new liquid AIO I'll let you hear again this is at VRM fans and the pump now I'm going to remove off the VRM fans and just to run the pump and this is how it sounds like see to me it's very quiet I can't even hear what the uh, pump is sounding but when you attach the VRM fan right it does have some noise but it's not that loud running at full speed and if this is plugged in the case right you can't hear the I mean the noise at all 
I will be conducting thermal tests on both platforms, be it the AMD or the Intel. On my left, this is a 7950X AMD processor on a B650M Mota MSI motherboard. And on my right, this is a 13700K Intel processor on a ASUS ROG Maximus Z790 Hero motherboard. And as for the Liquid AIO, I will do a comparison. Let me just put this away. Now, besides testing the uh, Liquid Freezer tree, which you can see over here, I will be te testing against the Liquid Freezer 2, which is this. Now, in this test, I'll be only using 280 as in like the radiator is 280 and nothing else. Before I show you the configuration in UEFI, be it the Intel platform or the AMD platform, good news for those of you who wanted to purchase this Liquid Freezer 3 right now, as there's a promotion going on whereby the price is below MSRP. Reason for this, Arctic is celebrating their 23rd anniversary, so do not miss this chance. If you are in Europe, you can scan this QR code and it will take you to Arctic Web Shop and you can purchase directly from there. If you are in US and to save the fee charges right, I would to advise you to head down to Amazon.com. You can scan this QR code and purchase directly from there. And for the viewers here in Singapore, you are not left behind. In fact, there are two local shops which is practicing the promotion event on Arctic 23rd anniversary. And these are the two shops which is PC Kaki and Cyber Sipper. All is needed is just to scan the QR code, it will take you directly to their web shop. Now, in general, for those of you who actually wanted this Liquid Freezer 3, you can make your purchase right now. Do not miss this opportunity as they are on promotion. Starting off with the configuration in AMD, and this is how the interface looks like. I have actually set the XMP profile on my RAMs. Next, I've set the PBO2 with all this PPT, TDC, and EDC settings. Now, though you see all the configuration numbers over here, right? It still depends greatly on the cooling, how much the Liquid Freezer 3 or Liquid Freezer 2 can provide, and you will pull accordingly. Next, I've set the uh, optimizer curve, whereby I have all negative on all calls and at minus 20. Next, I've done an offset on the uh, vCall, which is minus 0 0.05 volt. Next will be the Intel platform. Again, on my RAMs, I've set the XMP profile. Next, I've limited the voltage, which is 238. I know that this processor can take 253, but I wouldn't want to overheat due to the fact that I'm actually in a hot and humid country. And my room temperature is always at 30 to 31 degrees Celsius. That's why all the configuration you see here, be it the Intel or the AMD, right? I've limited them down. Besides setting the uh, power limit, which is 238 on the long duration and 238 on the short duration, I've set the offset on the vCore, which you can see here is minus 0 0.05 volt. On the actual run, I'll be using Cinebench R23. Simultaneously, I will run the Furmark together with the Cinebench R23. Re reason being right, I'm not using a discrete graphic card. Instead, I'll be using the integrated graphic card that's built in this processor. So I have a total stress on the processor, be it processing load or the GPU load. And with this said, right, you will see all the stats over here showing you what are the temperature and such, power drawn and such. Now, there is a comparison between, as mentioned to you, Liquid Freezer 2 and Liquid Freezer 3 on the 280 variant. So on my left is the Liquid Freezer 2. On my right, which is highlighted in green, this is the new Liquid Freezer 3. And besides this, right, I'll be testing the VRM fan that is along with this uh, liquid AIO. So I'm showing you all the stats as in like the motherboard, the VRM, the chipset, and etc. All the temperature will list out and you can do a comparison side by side. Now, how I conduct the test is pretty straightforward. I will first mount the unit with, let's say, for example, Liquid Freezer 2 or Liquid Freezer 3. I will run it 30 minutes where I will not record it. Once that's done right, I'll let it cool down for five minutes and I will run the 10 minutes actual run where I do the recording. Reason for this, right? I want it because when you mount the uh, AIO on your IHS, right? It, it takes some time to get used to or should I say cure. So that's the reason why I run 30 minutes first before I conduct the actual run. And of course, during the duration, right? In between, there is a 
idle time of five minutes before I conduct the 10 minutes recording, which you will see. Same apply to the uh, Intel. No difference of what I've explained to you on AMD. It's all the same. And the run and the test conduct is the same, which is 30 minutes on load, five minutes on idle, and the actual recording, which you will see, which is the 10 minutes. Now, both configuration be the AMD or Intel, right? You will be seeing the power limits that I've actually done. Now, for Intel, when I set it to 238, right? It will be at 238 watts. But for AMD, right? It depends. As I mentioned, it depends on the cooling of the liquid freezer tree, and you will pull according to the figures and not to the figures that I've set. So it's a different thing. Do take note on it. Now, without further ado, let's show you the results on the actual 10 minutes run on both AMD and Intel platform. Results are out. I'll first start off with the AMD platform where I make use of a 7950X processor. Now, I've deliberately taken off the last three minutes of the 10 minutes run, or should I say the recording, just to explain the uh, situation on how well this Arctic Liquid Freezer 3. And on top of it, right, before the actual 10 minutes recording, I've actually done a 30 minutes, which I'm not record now, and to do a five minutes idle. So this will be a fair comparison. I'll just let this run for the last three minutes. As you can see, right, significant improvement on the CPU temperature. If I were to use a liquid freezer 2, 280, it will be hovering around 85 to 87 degrees Celsius. Else for the liquid freezer 3, right, consistently is hovering around 82 degrees to 84 and never up, which is good. And another point that you need to take note as I Further down to probably, let's say, last two minutes or so, as I let it run, take a look at the uh, clock frequency of the CPU. On the LF3, right, it's sustaining at 5.1 and above gigahertz. Else, for the LF2, it's hovering only at 5 gigahertz. Slightly more, but not that much. So this proves that the LF3, in fact, have a significant improvement in cooling. Not only this, looking at the temperature over here, take a look. See, look at the VRM, it does work where it drops about three degrees Celsius around there. And the rest of the chipset, right, as you can compare it, it's much lower as compared to the LF2. With all this running, right, besides the uh, Temperature on the CPU, right? Even on the integrated graphic card, look at it. It's running great. Now for the Intel platform, delivery again, I have taken off the last three minutes. I'll let it run. If you were to compare the CPU temperature, right? There are not much significant to it. And do note that I'm making use of contact frame from NAB on the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2. As compared to the contact frame, on the liquid freezer tree that comes with the AIO. Now, though there are not much significant drop on the temperature, but it did improve a little, not that much. But when you look at the overall, as in the motherboard temperature and such, right, there is still significant drop, which is good. My impression of this new liquid AIO coming from Arctic, known as the liquid freezer tree, 
is on the positive side. First off, the construction of the unit. Starting off with the radiator, I like how they have implemented a new material on the radiator whereby it's actually rough, not rough to cut your fingers, but in a way there are some texture so when you grip on it right you have more grip as compared to the smooth surface on their previous AIO which is the liquid freezer 2. Now there is also another function whereby having a better grip on the radiator and also when you you know press your fingers on the radiator itself right you won't leave any fingerprint marks. Next thing will be on their fin stack as on their previous liquid AIO the fin stack is about 34, 33 to 34 millimeter else for this right is all the way up to 36 to 37 millimeter you have more surface area to absorb heat and to dissipate heat that will bring down even good temperature next will be the hose that is built on this unit this are nicely braided and it's very flexible as compared to the liquid liquid freezer 2 and on top of it right they have done this connection point the butt between the hose and the pump and the hose to the radiator with this black kind of butt which I like and over on the pump right with the implementation of this swivel it makes mounting very easy see you can position your hose properly another thing good point about the pump whereby if you have mount this in your system and as you know that this is detachable where it controls the VRM fan and your ARGB effects so in the event Let's say if the ARGB LED is 40 or the fence is 40, you can just replace this whole unit, just remove this without taking out the whole pump. And you can just replace this and to plug it in, which is very convenient. On top of it, right, I like how they design the cables right now, as you're given two choice, either to plug with one connection point where you don't control the VRM and such, and for this right, they have done deliberately listening to our views. We want total control on all this connection point, which controls this, the fan, the radiator fan, the VRM fans, which is located over here, and the pump. So we have total control. You can set all the RPMs individually. But as a reminder, I would prefer to run the pump at full speed. And you have weakness, right? During the sound test, the pump is silent. I can't hear anything. And it was so near probably you can hear the noise but imagine that it's a way which is about two to three feet away from you and it's inside the case you can't hear the pump noise at all so this is one thing good now besides this right i've shown you the results on amd it's a win-win situation if you are running on an am4 or am5 platform as you can witness that i've compared to the previous um, liquid air which is the lf2 to this LF3, right? The LF3, in fact, has a big gap on temperature drop. Not only this, the VRM they have, I mean, the VRM fans they have designed here, right? Is of good use. I've shown you the temperature too. It dropped drastically. And you might be saying that, what's so great about dropping those temperature on the VRM, the RAMs, and the, you know, the M.2? Now, you might not know about this. If you're running off a system, right, if you can cool down those components, your motherboard will allow your processor to draw more current, which will generate heat. So by suppressing the uh, temperature on all those components, your VRM heatsink, your, you know, your M.2 and your RAMs, right, it allows the uh, processor to draw more current and to provide better performance and to, you know, really push the uh, clock speed as you have weakness. Now, for the Intel side, I know that some of you might be saying that, hey, there's no much difference, but do take to a point whereby I've tested on the Liquid Freezer 2 with a contact frame, which I have to purchase additionally. If I am not going to plug the contact frame, right, the temperature will increase drastically about 5 to 7 degrees. So coming to a standpoint whereby if you were to purchase an Intel platform and you do not have the contact frame. Arctic have covered you. When you purchase the liquid freezer tree, right, you will come with the uh, contact frame, which is provided, which is one unit. And on top of it, just as a friendly reminder, if you guys were to purchase it right now during their celebration of 23rd anniversary, it's at a promotional price, which is below 
MSRP. Now, besides this, right, I'd like to talk about, okay, let me just clear this. I'd like to talk about the other stuff that Arctic have provided me. The mouse mat, as you can see over here, right, the whole mouse mat is pretty big. And the size is actually on 90, 900 to 400 mm. Or should I say 900, 900 in length, 400 in width. And it's very big. And if you are a collector of Arctic or a fan of Arctic, right, you can purchase this and to keep it. Like for myself, right, I like this mouse mat. The material is nice with the imprint of the new liquid freezer tree, followed by the specs. And it does show you the dimension, like the uh, pump height and the width, followed by the radiator. And over at this side, right, okay, let me just pull this. As you can see, right, you have nice diagram of the sizes of the radiator inclusive of the pump head, which is nice. Now, I would like to thank Arctic to have provided all this for me to feather with, especially I like this desk fan here, which is very practical in usage. I can just remove and clean off the blade at ease and it does provide strong wind. That's the, that's the main point of this uh, desk fan and it runs quiet. Besides this, a nice mouse mat and also providing me with this 280 black liquid freezer tree. Now I know that you have watched my you know content over here and I did show you about the 360 and the 420 but those are actually purchase item from for my colleagues which is interested in this unit and they allow me to you know share with my viewers. Thank you very much to both of my colleagues. And with this say right, again, I'd like to remind you guys again, if you want to purchase this right now, it's on promotion. I sounds like a salesman, but I'm just over excited on how this unit can shine. So that's the reason why I'm actually introducing you all this stuff. And also as an appreciation that congratulations, I think on your 23rd anniversary. Now, for those of you actually new to my channel, welcome to my channel. If you like my content, do remember to subscribe and to click on the notification bell button. Till then, take care, goodbye, see ya.